Shabbat Shalom and welcome to the Friday afternoon blog uh, based upon the Torah portion and this week is Behalotcha and really some interesting uh, streams of thinking really in, in the portion this week which you want to pick up on and certainly we'll see are very topical. A couple of things that we see um, in the portion is first of all the creation of the of the Pesach Sheni, the second Passover, which of course is not in the original commandments. This is one which um, the Lord added as a commandment, and it was an interesting reason why he added it. He added it because there were certain people who were unclean, unable to partake in the first Passover at the right time, and so of course, in a month later, the, the Pesach Sheni was instituted, and then suddenly that tells us something quite incredible about who God is and his attitude towards us as people, because ultimately God wants everyone to be able to partake of that Passover. So if something has come up where you become unclean or whatever reason it might possibly be there, God's heart is such that he, I would say he changed the command, but he adapted it to make it possible that more people could keep the Pesach. That is really, really important for us because fundamentally we begin to see a pattern here emerging of the one, the bedrock uh, foundations, if you like, of Judaism, which is inclusivity. A desire that no one should be left behind and everyone should be included in some way. We see it again, actually, interesting enough, with another bit in this portion as well from Moshe, how he interacts with his father-in-law, Yitro. Yitro, of course, was not born Jewish and wasn't part of the tribe. And yet Moshe pleads with him to go with them. You know, and yet this man was a a priest of some pagan deity. And yet Moshe says, please go with us, come with us. Opening up his arms to embrace really that, uh, the, that inclusive message which goes out. And of course, as we know, with the convert, um, Judaism has been very open to people who want to convert to Judaism and come and join us. Of course, in, in rabbinic tradition, Yitro is often seen as one of these converts, in fact. But it shows you that underneath it all, we actually want people to come and we want that inclusion. And it runs through so many of the commandments that we have here, because fundamentally, when we go through life, we're really presented with two choices in terms of our attitude of our faith and how we look out to the world with that faith. One is to include people. The other is to exclude people. You're going to be in one camp or the other one form or another. There are shades around the edges, but principally that's the two, the two camps where you're going to stand. And what we see in humanity, in particular when we think about these things, is that controlling people, people who like to control others, these people often are divisive people. They like to bring division. They are far from inclusive. In fact, actually, they drive, want to drive wedges between people using such division to build their own level of control and their own power. They seek to exploit that division. And often what happens at that point is that then there's a target group who is singled out as a, a group to be vilified and attacked and therefore using that enmity to build up their own power and their status of control yet again upon a target group. All of this is used to galvanise that kind of support when ex exclusivity, if you like, in that way, seeking to exclude people. When you see that happening, then these are the kind of behaviour traits which go with it, whereas the inclusive approach is actually completely opposite. It's one that is trying to heal divisions, trying to bring people in, trying to pacify, bring peace where there is conflict and so on. This, of course, is exactly not just the pattern of Judaism, it's the pattern of the kingdom of God and anyone who lives within the kingdom should be seeking to live according to those principles. Divisiveness, exploitation, manipulation to create division and problems serves to make oneself bigger and stronger and more powerful is not a hallmark of a Jewish person or a believer, or shouldn't be. That is not the way that we're meant to be. The kingdom of God is not like this, it's inclusive. Why is it so? Because in the kingdom of God, all human beings are equal. And this week, in so many ways, has shown us how many people in this world are still unable to understand the basic equality of all, all human beings. And are seeking to exploit differences between us, whether it's creed or skin colour or whatever it may be, whatever country you come from, language group, whatever, there's always a reason 
Or if someone will try and pick a target group to divide and conquer, to rule and to therefore come out on top, to rather not to include but to exclude and make oneself bigger on the top of it. In the, image, in the kingdom of God, the image of God is in all human beings. It is a fundamental quality that we as Jews stand upon, as Messianic Jews we stand upon. We have to stand on this. If we begin to denigrate and diminish the image of God in people, in human beings, we are on a very sticky slope. You see this when you are confronted by racists in today's world who are still framing their view of the world upon 18th century racial theories, ethnic theories, which are nothing other than theories. When even the word of God says in the book of Acts 17, are we not all one blood? Are we not all one family? Even in the first century in Judaism, people understood that as humanity, we are one. We're one. And yet people denigrate other people. They grind them down because of skin color or background or whatever it may be, rich or poor, whatever. There's always going to be something people will seek to exploit in this way. And I think... When we've seen the events of this week with George Floyd in the States, and I just do want to state this and put this out there quite clearly, I am shocked, disgusted and horrified by what I've seen and heard. That poor family who have lost their son, father, it is shocking to see that in today's world this is still going on. It is fundamentally at odds with Judaism, absolutely at odds with Messianic Judaism, where we seek the inclusion, the equality of all people. I'm not talking about if God disciplines someone because of sin. That is different. But having a different skin colour is not a sin. It's part of who we are as humanity. And the last time in human history, when these kind of things were played out before our eyes, if you look back at the textbooks where faces were being measured, foreheads measured, noses being measured, space between the eyes being measured, the last time people were doing that was in Nazi Germany. When we begin to do that and racially classify people and set up social policies and enact them against particular social groups, we are not in the kingdom of God. We are acting on behalf of Hasatan who seeks the demise of humanity. Such policies directly lead to death camps. And I cannot put it in strong terms, stronger terms than that. When I see what I've seen this last week, I'm horrified. This is not the badge and hallmark of any decent humanity. Torah is utterly opposed to such things. It is opposed to racism. It is opposed to those kind of segregationists, exclusive pushes of, of human policy and decisions. The kingdom of God wants to embrace. Doesn't mean the kingdom of God allows anything and people to behave in any way they want. That is not what I'm saying. But fundamentally, the kingdom of God is to embrace people and draw them closer to God, to allow people to repent if they need to. Our job as Jewish people, as believers, is to represent these values to the people around us. Not to exclude, but to seek to include to draw closer, to bring people closer to the God of Israel, to the truth of the Torah. That is our calling and our task. Have a wonderful Shabbat, and uh, I will speak to you again at some point, probably next week. Shabbat Shalom to Darabani Bye-bye.